कॉलेज ऑफ फिशरीज अंडर गुरु अंगद देव वेटनरी एंड एनिमल साइंस यूनिवर्सिटी वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन ईयर टू थाउजेंड एट टू प्रोवाइड स्किल्ड ह्यूमन रिसोर्स टेक्निकल सपोर्ट एंड आउटरीच बैकअप टू फिशरी सेक्टर ऑफ द स्टेट द कॉलेज हैज कम्पिटेंट एक्सपीरियंस फैकल्टी एंड इज वेल इक्विप्ड विद लैब एंड फार्म फैसिलिटीज फॉर टेकिंग अप टीचिंग रिसर्च एंड एक्सटेंशन प्रोग्राम इफेक्चुअली द कॉलेज ऑफ फिशरीज हैज फाइव डिपार्टमेंट्स एक्वाकल्चर फिशरीज रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट एक्वेटिक इन्वायरमेंट फिश प्रोसेसिंग टेक्नोलॉजी एंड फिश इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिशरीज रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन टू थाउजेंड एट विद द इंसेप्शन ऑफ कॉलेज एंड इन्वॉल्व इन टीचिंग ऑफ यू जी पी जी एंड पी एच डी कोर्सेज द डिपार्टमेंट हैज कम्पिटेंट फैकल्टी एंड वेल इक्विप्ड विद लैब्स एंड फैसिलिटीज टू टेक अप एडवांस रिसर्च इन द फील्ड ऑफ फिशरीज रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट Fish nutrition and feeding management play significant role in the sustainable development of aquaculture. Feed is the largest component of the total cost of production, contributing around 50 to 60 percent of the total operational cost. In view of that, the efficient utilization of feed by the fish. is pivotal to supply required nutrition for performing its normal physiological functions like enhanced growth reproductive performance and strong immune system with effective response to physiological and environmental stressors an understanding of the food and feeding habits and digestive system gives an idea about the feeding requirement of fish which further helps the fish farmers and nutritionist to design effective feeding management plan for better feed utilization insights into the anatomy of the digestive system of fishes are important in determining appropriate feeding strategies including feeding rates frequency and ration size the sound knowledge of the digestive system of the fish is also necessary for effective feed formulation and in choosing a proper feeding regime for overall growth and gonadal development of fishes the present video is prepared to give the students an insight of digestive system of commercially important inland food fishes for better understanding of the concept of feeding biology of fishes the experiment starts with objective an insight to fish digestive system the requirement of material for the said experiment fish specimen dissection trays dissection box cotton pins balance for taking weight and measuring scale for measurement of length the learning outcome of present video are feeding habits and behavior of fishes various organs of the digestive system of fishes and their functions structural adaptations in the anatomy of the digestive tract feeding habits and feeding behavior of fish the feeding habits and behavior of fish refer to the process of the search ingestion of food fishes feed on a wide range of food material including plants as well as animal 
depending upon the number of food items consumed by the fish the fishes may be categorized as uriphagic that feeds on wide variety of food items and stenophagic that feeds on few types of food items in nature fish feeds on a range of food items including protozoans micro crustaceans microscopic invertebrate larvae and eggs of various animals annelid worms snails mussels crustaceans insects smaller fishes tadpoles and many more the plant based food include phytoplankton unicellular and filamentous algae and parts of higher aquatic plants now we will discuss about feeding habits of culturable fishes fishes are classified as herbivorous carnivorous or omnivorous depending on their feeding habit besides these some species feed mainly on plankton and form a separate group called plankton feeder or planktonivorous likewise the other groups are crustacean feeder which exclusively feed on crustaceans molluscan feeder and several species are larvivorous piscivorous etc so first of all we will discuss about herbivorous fishes most of the culturable fishes feed mainly on plant material and their gut content shows 75% or more plant material in their gut a small amount of animal matter also enters to the gut and may constitute up to 10% of total gut content hence these species are considered to be herbivorous examples are labio rohita labio calbasu tino pheringodon edila Osphoronemus gorami, Labio gonias, Labio boata, Labio fimbriatus and many more. Carnivorous fishes. Fishes feed mainly on animals which constitute a high percentage of their feed that is more than 75%. The examples are Valagoatu, Spirita singhala, Spirita or Rita Rita, Notopterus Notopterus, various species of Channa and Ompak Pabda. Omnivorous fishes. Fishes feed on mixed diet including both plant and animal matter. The percentage of animal and plant matter varies with the species. Some of the species consume much larger amount of plant material than that of animal and so that they are called as herbi omnivore like puntia sophor puntia sarana gudusia chapra etc few omnivorous species feed on greater proportion of animal origin and they are called as carni omnivore like Eutrobictis vacha, Osteobrama, etc. Few species like Cyrenus mrigla, Cyprinus scarpio, Oreochromis niloticus showed almost equal amount of plant and animal material in their gut content. The next category is plankton feeder or planktonivorous fishes. These fishes are evolved with an efficient filtering mechanism for obtaining food and preferably feed on phyto and zooplankton they may be either herbivore carnivore or omnivore the examples are katla katla hypophthalmicthes monitrix hilsa elisha gadusia chapra and others so we can say the digestive system of fishes varies with food and feeding habit of fish 
these variations are seen in the position of mouth buccopharyngeal region relative gut length presence or absence of stomach etc based on the feeding habits the fishes shows various feeding behavior according to the manner of feeding these classification are predators predators are the fishes that feed on macroscopic animals they feed either by constantly on the move hunting and pursuing their prey or lie on wait to catch the prey that stray into their territory some predators feed upon small fishes or insects found at or near the water surface the next category of fishes according to feeding behavior are grazers grazers fishes feed on bottom organisms or planktons that are selectively consumed the actual taking of food is by bites while browsing continuously the next category are strainers the fishes which filter their food mainly diatoms and crustaceans from the water these fishes swim through rich plankton beds filter the water and swallow the soup like concentrate strainers normally have numerous fine and elongated gill rackers the next categories are sucker fishes sucker are those with suck mud or food containing material to obtain their food sometimes food items are separated from the sediments before being swallowed although in some cat fishes food is ingested together with bottom deposits after this short introduction we will move towards the digestive system of fishes and associated digestive glands the structural components of a fish digestive system include the mouth teeth gill rackers esophagus stomach pyloric cecca pancreatic tissues liver gall bladder intestine and anus the digestive tract is tubular in structure the whole digestive tract is often referred to as the gut and in fish the gut usually has four divisions these are the head gut fore gut mid gut and hind gut the head gut part is the most anterior part including the buccopharyngeal region the mouth which consists of oral or buccal cavity and the gills present in branchial or pharyngeal cavity the fore gut starts at the posterior edge of the gill and includes the esophagus and stomach the mid gut consists of intestines and pyloric cecca if present the mid gut is the longest portion of the gut and may be coiled into complicated loops the hind gut includes the enlarged portion of intestines including rectum or anus each portion of the gut has a very variable structure for adaptation the liver and pancreas are the organs involved in digestion but are found outside the tubular structure we will start with the buccopharyngeal region which includes buccal plus pharynx part the first phase of digestion is the ingestion of food into the mouth the mouth has a variety of adaptations for capturing handling and sorting of food before entry into the stomach the mouth and buccopharynx region shows 
maximum structural variations so we will start with the mouth the mouth lies at the anterior end of the snout and opens behind the buccal cavity leading to pharynx depending on the feeding habit and niche occupied by the fish in a water body the mouth has following variations the first one is upturned mouth also called as superior mouth this kind of mouth observed in surface feeder fishes the fishes with upturned mouth has a long lower jaw and a comparatively smaller upper jaw the mouth opening is toward to the top of the head the peculiar examples are katla katla and silver carp hypophthalmic this molitrix terminal mouth a terminal mouth is located on the end of the head here the upper and lower jaw at same distance and fishes with terminal mouth may chase and capture the things the examples are grass carp tinopharyngodon edila and labiorohita subterminal or inferior mouth a subterminal or inferior mouth is on the under side of the head and with longer lower jaw and smaller upper jaw fishes with this type of mouth usually feed on the bottom the examples are sirinus mregala mregal and labio calpaso which can be easily observed among our ponds in cultivable fishes the next type of mouth is protrusible mouth it is also termed as pig like mouth fishes with browsing nature of feeding habit possess this kind of mouth like common carp cyprinus carpio and tilapia oreochromus miloticus they have a browsing nature of feeding habit now further we will move towards dentition the teeth arrangements in fishes that vary in type number and arrangement according to the feeding habit teeth serve to catch and hold the prey the arrangement and structure of the teeth are related to the kind of food there is a strong correlation among kind of teeth feeding habits and food eaten so in this section first of all we will discuss about the dentition pattern in carnivorous and predatory fishes in which strong and pointed teeth are present examples balagoa 2 chana striatus chana maruleus notopterus notopterus in balagoa 2 mouth is very deeply cleft its corner reaching far behind the eyes the teeth in jaws are set in wide bands vomerian teeth in are present in two small patches the juvenile of this species feed mainly on insects while adults feed on smaller fish crustaceans and mollusk another carnivorous species like notopterus notopterus possess teeth on the tongue it also referred as bony tongue fish due to carnivorous nature of feeding habit these osteoglossomorph fishes are characterized by having three sets of jaws a mandibular jaw apparatus anteriorly a pharyngeal jaw apparatus posteriorly and a tongue bite apparatus on the tongue the mandibular jaw apparatus and pharyngeal jaw apparatus are primitive features of the feeding mechanisms in various fishes but the tba that is tongue bite apparatus is a novelty of these notopterous fishes now the next carnivorous species chenna striatus commonly known as striped murrel it has a large mouth with 4 to 7 visible canine teeth on the bottom layer of mouth which correlates 
with the feeding habit of the fish. These fishes have relatively wide mouth with large scales so that they are compared with snakes. They feed on fishes, frogs, snakes, insects, earthworms, tadpoles and crustaceans. Now in the pharynx, pharyngeal teeth are present which are borne by gill arches and termed as superior and inferior pharyngeal teeth. They prevent regurgitation of food and also serve as rasping organ. Teeth of the buccopharynx may be villiform, incisiform, canine-like, molariform or as blunt knobs. The maxillary and mandibular teeth in carnivorous species along with vomerine and palatine teeth serve to prevent the escape of prey from the mouth. Further, we will move to herbivorous fishes where teeth are completely absent from the jaws and palate region. However, the inferior pharyngeal teeth in the pharynx region are well developed. These teeth are blunt, molary form, work against a dorsal hard callus pad and used for crushing the prey. Further, in omnivorous species, the intermediate condition of herbivorous and carnivorous fishes is observed as they feed on both herbivorous diet as well as carnivorous diet. These omnivorous fishes sometimes possess fine teeth on jaws and palate. These teeth are small and are much less developed than those of the carnivorous species. These are the species which are designated as carni omnivorous species. While in herbi omnivorous species like Cyrinus mregla, common carp, teeth are absent from the jaws and palate and buccopharyngeal cavity resembles with that of the herbivorous fishes. Another omnivorous species like Cyrinus mregla and Labiocalbasu both are bottom feeder in habit having inferior mouth and the dentitation pattern accordingly. They don't have teeth on their jaws or palate region. Now we will move towards the gill records of the fishes. Gill records basically they are present on the inner side of each gill arch and primarily meant for protection of gill filaments and also perform significant role in feeding of the fishes also. In carnivorous and predatory fishes, these gill records are long, hard and teeth like modified in the form of the teeth just to cut the animal material as per their feeding habit. If we talk about omnivorous species, the gill records are short and stumpy to crush the mixed diet of plant and animal matter. If we talk about herbivorous species, they are short gill records forming broad sieve like structures just to filter the water current for retaining algae, unicellular algae and other fine material. If we talk about plankton feeder fishes, the filtering mechanism is very well developed and best observed. In these planktonivorous species, the gill records are fairly long, compact, thin and forming a sieve-like structure just like a muslin cloth to filter the planktons. In Katla Katla, we can see the gill records are fairly sieve-like structure. While in silver carp, these gill records are very compactly arranged as it feeds on phytoplankton and phytoplanktons are much smaller in size and they have to retain them in their gills to further movement towards the pharynx region. Thus, gill records exhibit structural adaptation in relation to feeding habits of fish. These records vary in numbers and size and different fishes 
depending upon the ecological niche occupied by the fish. The next digestive part which is actually present in pharynx region related with digestions are taste buds and mucus secreting glands. A large number of taste buds and mucus secreting cells are present on lips, oral valves, barbels and it helps the fish in detecting and sorting out the food material. A soft cushiony pad in the roof of the buccal cavity of many herby and omnivorous species having these taste but it has a large number of papillae in which taste buds and mucus secreting cells are present the presence or absence of taste buds depends on the feeding habit of the fish carnivorous and predatory fishes like channa balago spirita singala having less number of taste buds as they feed by sight while fishes like katla mrigal mahashi depend on the gustatory sense for feeding however the mucus secreting cells are present in all the fishes as they secrete large amount of mucus to lubricate the food for easy swallowing of food next important part of digestive system is esophagus the pharyngeal cavity opens behind the esophagus most fishes have a short wide esophagus that serve as a transitional area between the straighted muscles of the mouth and the smooth muscles of the gut mucus producing cells are present in the esophagus which facilitate the movement of food from buccal cavity to stomach the esophagus is a short tube leading to stomach in cases of fishes with stomach or intestine in case of fishes without stomach in general the esophagus serves only as a passage way however enzyme activity has been detected in the esophagus of some fishes indicating a more active role of the esophagus in the digestion process in these species in herbivorous and omnivorous fishes the esophagus is short and narrow while in carnivorous and predatory fishes esophagus is much longer and distensible to facilitate swallowing of large sized prey next we'll discuss another important part of digestive system which is stomach or intestinal bulb fishes are classified as stomach or stomachless fishes it is about 85% of teleost which have stomach and 50% doesn't have stomach some fish species like carps do not possess true stomach and termed as stomachless fishes In this species the anterior part of intestine modifies and swallows to form a sac like structure termed as intestinal bulb in these fishes the short esophagus is followed by intestinal bulb which serve as for storage of food This is the special feature of cyprinids. Fishes with stomach generally having sac-like stomach, but it is not demarcated externally from esophagus. Anatomically, the stomach has prominent thick mucosal folds in carnivorous and predatory fishes. In some species like hilsa mullet 
the stomach is reduced in size and greatly thickened as gizzard like structure for trituration of food items. A large number of gastric glands are present in mucosa of stomach in carnivorous fishes which secrete acidic gastric juice consists of hydrochloric acid and proteolytic enzyme like pepsin. Digestion of protein thus begins in stomach and continues to intestine. Fishes which do not have true stomach like carbs, protein digestion takes place in intestine in alkaline medium by the action of trypsin secreted by pancreas. Next we will discuss about intestine and its structure. There is a strong correlation between anatomical structure of the digestive tract and the feeding habits of the fish. The intestine shows considerable variations in its length in respect to feeding habit of fish. It is generally short and nearly straight in carnivores and predatory fishes, but is long, thin walled and highly coiled in herbivorous species. The omnivorous species show an intermediate condition. The ratio between the gut length and body length that is RGL relative length of gut has been found fairly constant in several species. The digestive and absorptive properties of gut and intestine determine the rate of digestion and daily intake of food which further decides the growth of fish as growth ultimately depends on efficiency of digestion and assimilation. Next we will discuss about pyloric and intestinal cica. In some species several finger like outgrowths develop from the anterior part of the intestine in the region of pylorus which is known as pyloric or intestinal cica and it opens into lumen of intestine. These cica are reported in Notopterus, Chana, Mastacimbalus, but absent in carbs. They vary in size and numbers and serve as accessory food reservoir. Next structure we will discuss that is rectum. In most fishes, Rectum is not demarcated externally from the intestine. However, in some species it is wider than the posterior intestine and distinguishable internally by the presence of an iliorectal valve. The mucosal folds of rectum are short and broad and possesses large number of mucose secreting cells which produce copious mucus to lubricate undigested food and easy defecation. Now we will discuss about digestive glands of fishes. There are three main digestive glands present in fishes. They are liver, pancreas and gallbladder. The liver is an important metabolic organ. Embryologically, it originates from an evagination of developing intestine of which anterior portion develops as liver proper and posterior portion as gallbladder. It lies over or particularly surrounds the stomach and aids 
in digestion by secreting bile a greenish fluid which strongly emulsifying properties bile is secreted from liver as a result of red blood corpuscle breakdown and contains fat emulsifying salts along with bile pigments namely bilirubin and bilirubin the bile is stored in the gall bladder and serves to emulsify lipids in the gut and may contain other waste products the bile duct opens into the anterior intestine or into the pyloric cecca if present the bile salt helps to hydrolyze fat and also adjust the alkalinity of digestive juice for proper action of digestive enzymes the liver is also act as a storage organ for lipid and glycogen in some fishes a large amount of lipid is stored in the liver to maintain buoyancy in other fishes glycogen is the major stored nutrient but in general the liver is bilobed in telios Next we'll discuss about pancreas. The pancreas is involved in many important function in digestion. Pancreatic morphology is variable in many bony species. In most fishes, unlike in land animals, there is no discrete pancreas. The pancreas is highly diffused gland. scattered and embedded in the mesenteric among the coils of intestine in a diffused pancreas several small ducts open into the intestine and the pyloric cecca in other cases where the pancreas is found inside the liver the pancreas delivers its secretions directly into the gall bladder the pancreas produces insulin and digestive secretion principally protease and bicarbonates insulin stimulates uptake of amino acids from the intestine and may stimulate growth this pancreas is present in between the two lobes of the liver surrounding the blood vessels and in many species it extends into the liver forming hepatopancreas pancreas is involved in producing digestive secretion and primary source of digestive enzymes in most animals it also produces zymogens so this is all about the basic information of digestive system of fish the anatomy and morphology of digestive system varied with feeding habit and according to habitat or niche occupied by the fish in a water body